the birds are chirping, the temperatures are coming up. It's almost springtime here on Delmarva Backyard. And I can't wait because that's, I, I do a lot of barbecue in the winter, but man, it's nothing like the summertime, you know, when you're not battling those temperatures, it's a whole lot easier to get out there on the smoker and cook some great food. Today, what I wanna do is a follow-up video to my most popular video, which is tenderizing steaks. I've done a couple of videos about tenderizing steaks. You can go check those out. But the, the one that hit the biggest was the first one. And it had pineapple, it had kiwi, it had orange, and then we had a control steak. And there's a whole lot of feedback in the comment section. Some good, some not so good, but it drew a lot of interest. And I think the reason it drew a lot of interest is because we love steak so much. But steak is getting so expensive. And one of the comments I heard a lot was, well, why not just buy a better grade beef? You know, buy a, buy a prime grade or a Wagyu grade or whatever. There's an easy answer to that. Cost. It costs a whole lot more money to jump grades in steak than it does to go out and buy a fruit or, you know, whatever and, and marinate the steak with it. So cost is the reason, guys. And I picked up some feedback in the comment section and some suggestions. And that's why we're going to evaluate three more ways to tenderize your steaks. Stay tuned. Today we're going to evaluate three strip steaks with three different methods of tenderizing. I'll show you those in just a second, but what I, why I chose the strip steak is because I'm very familiar with the strip steak. I use the lower, the choice grade, it's your grocery store grade steak. So everybody, if you're going to Walmart or you're going to wherever or whatever your grocery store is, this is usually the type, the grade of steak that you're going to get as a choice grade. So we're going to start there and I know the consistency of a strip steak you know i eat plenty of them so uh i'll know any differences and you know know what to look for a little better especially since i buy these strip steaks from this exact grocery store uh you know many times the meats are usually pretty similar i've gotten some comments on those other videos that were like well you can never really know if it's the if you're getting true results unless you cut it from the you know coefficient of the whatever of the same cow and blah 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 guys relax we're just talking about steaks. We're just trying to see backyard style if one of these methods can make your steak that much better and have your friends and your family like, wow, now that was a good steak. Okay, so we're using some generic, just good old fashioned tenderizer. You may have Adolph's or you know, some Walmart great value. And basically the ingredient in here that makes meat tender, quote unquote, is the bromelain. So it's, you know, similar to uh, what's found in, in a lot of the fruits. And they just take that and put it into powder form. Light soy sauce. I, I've never experimented with this, but kind of makes sense to me. I'm just not sure how much it's gonna tenderize. I know it'll give it a nice flavor and a great big old papaya. So we're gonna chop this up and mush it into a mess, put it in the bag with a steak and we'll see how that goes. A papaya is the number one suggestion I got from all the YouTube comments. You know, I tried papaya, try papaya, try papaya. So that's what we're gonna do. And to be honest with you, I've never cut one of these. So I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna kinda see what we're dealing with. Since it's long, I'm gonna cut it the long way. We're not gonna need the whole thing. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and get these seeds out of here. That's the funkiest looking seeds. Never cut into a papaya before. 
I've eaten them, had their juice, but never cut into one. I'm just going to take some chunks of the inside, and we'll put that in the food processor, and turn it into a big mush. Let's go ahead and put the meat tenderizer, the powder on, and it says a serving size is a teaspoon, but uh, we got to do more than that, don't we? So let's go ahead and put a nice liberal coating of this stuff on here. It's very powdery, so it'll blow. But we're going to try to get it as even as possible on both sides and the edges as well. And I'm going to do extra. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to trying to put extra on here. So please don't leave me a comment about, why well, you're only supposed to use a teaspoon and blah, blah, blah. Th this is my experiment, okay? I'm going to put a lot on here. That way it, it inflates the results and it lets me know exactly what these products can do. If I just barely put enough on there to notice a difference, then, you know, that's that's not going to get the job done on an experiment. I want, I want them to be obvious. When I come back and I decide to use one of these ingredients for my cooking, then I'll hone it in a little bit so it's, you know, a little more tailored to the to the cut of meat that I'm trying to tenderize. Right now, I'm just trying to make it, you know, very, very obvious as far as the results. I am gonna vacuum seal these. I feel like when you vacuum seal things, it's just, you know, it's condensing the air in there and giving you more contact time. On these other two, I'm gonna go ahead and get some papaya all over this guy. Flipping. Kind of press it in a little bit. Get that guy in there. And the last one, we're just gonna put that in here like this. This is the one the vacuum bags are gonna be a real good deal on. That's gonna be the soy sauce. And again, I'm using a lot. I want the results to be inflated. I want them to be extreme. I wanna know what these things are made of. I'm going to rinse them off when they're done, but the soy sauce, I have a feeling, it's, it's definitely going to leave a very intense flavor. Vacuum seal these guys. I'm using the dam bags, so that way you can do liquids. Very nice. They're, I believe, in the video description down below. Damn bags didn't work. That's the first time it's ever done that. Mess is all cleaned up. Now let's go ahead and do the powder. And last but not least, the papaya. That's it. We're just gonna leave them right here on the table. It's about 60 degrees outside and we're gonna let them come up to temperature. Steaks are all vacuum sealed. What I mean by bring them up to temperature is I wanna let them naturally come up in temperature just from you know being outside here. Uh, that way they'll cook a little more evenly. If you put a steak on the grill, you know, when it's cold inside, then you're gonna cook at two different, you know, rates. And you wanna cook as evenly as you can possibly do it. So I'm gonna let them come up to temp. It's probably gonna take 45 minutes or so. That'll give me time to fire up the Weber. Man, it's been a while since I used my old Weber with the Rectech and now with the uh, Lone Star. I've just been using those two quite a bit. The Weber is the best place for a steak. I just haven't found a place better than a Weber or something similar to the Weber kettle. I'm using, I'm using lump charcoal and that's because the lump burns hotter 
burns faster, but it burns hotter. And that's what you want for steak. You want a nice, nice hot fire. Get those steaks on there, sear them. I like my medium rare. So, you know, you do yours however you like, but uh, today we're cooking these medium rare. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna go ahead and eat these guys, experiment or no experiment. Um, so let's go ahead and get this fire started. Forty-five minutes is how long we let them marinate, and this is the soy sauce steak. This is the powder of the tenderizer steak. And the papaya steak. You see the major difference? color and all three together see how it's breaking apart there There too. Not as much with the soy sauce. This is our papaya steak. I rinse these off pretty good. This is our tenderizer steak. and our soy steak. Yes. Definitely a little hotter down here. So on my turn, I'm gonna rotate them. kill those flames okay so I got both sides got my grill marks they look pretty good on the on the outside so now what I'm gonna do is rotate them back to their original position P T S I'm gonna pull them back on the on the indirect side here and we're just gonna finish them off right there Okay, so just like on the grill, we have our P, which is for papaya, the T, which is for the tenderizer or the, the powder stuff, and then S for soy sauce. We're almost at my favorite part, which is tasting. But first we need to let these steaks rest, let those juices kind of redistribute throughout the meat so that they don't dry out. Uh, when you cook a steak, especially on high heat, you know, they kind of like, I don't know, scrunch up a little bit and all the, everything kind of races to the center to get away from the heat. And then when you take them off the heat, everything just kind of relaxes a little bit. And so 15, maybe 20 minutes, and uh, we'll go ahead and slice these guys open. These are gonna be some amazing steaks. I can tell just by smelling them. I cooked each one of them to exactly 135 degrees. <laughs> Here we 
go. Let's try the papaya first. First thoughts with looking at it and through the cooking process, the papaya definitely was affected by the, the fruit a lot. And I think more than the other two. It was the second steak that was done. The soy steak was first, the papaya steak was second, and the powder tenderizer was last. Uh, in fact, it took quite a bit longer. So, uh, and it was, it was a little bit of a smaller steak, so a little, little interesting there. Let's go ahead and try a piece. Beautiful looking steak, juicy. That's pretty good. No leftover flavors. Tender. Very tender. The consistency was amazing. It was almost like a filet. No flavors left over. And you gotta remember, I didn't put any salt or pepper or anything on these guys. It's just straight steak. And then if there's any leftover flavors, I'm gonna get those too. Before we can say too much though, let's go ahead and try the powder tenderizer. Very juicy looking steak. Let's see how it tastes. It's got more chew. That reminds me just, you know, like a strip steak, any normal strip steak. No flavors. And um, just pretty, I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd say it was a plain steak with nothing done to it. Let's try the last one. It doesn't happen often, but when you do enough video work and audio work, technical difficulties sometimes happen. I didn't realize it until I was editing this video that I had lost the, the end of the last clip, which is where I finished talking about the the last steak there. So let me go ahead and finish the summary. The papaya steak was by far the best method. It def you could see it before I cooked it. The meat was a different color. It had, you know, it was really, really starting to pull apart. It was being tenderized and it had a major effect on the overall product at the end after the cook. It was definitely by far the most tender and it was just incredibly, it was much more noticeable than the other two steaks. And there was no after flavors at all. I, I wouldn't say it's as strong as the pineapple was in the first video, but I'd say it was probably getting close because the pineapple was on the, the steaks there for longer. I did 45 minutes this time, and I think that was, that was about perfect, to be honest with you. The second place steak was the soy steak had uh, a lot of flavor and it was hard to mentally get past that flavor uh, but it was definitely more tender too and you could see that before i cooked it where the meat was pulling apart quite well and you could taste it when you bit into it however it was a long ways away from being as tender as the papaya uh, so i mean it had a, it had some effect and but i think the flavor is the main thing that i took out of marinating with soy i'd never really marinated um beef or, or even i don't think i've marinated anything with soy sauce i've used all kinds of stuff in the in the past and worcestershire sauce is usually my go-to when i'm doing beef but i like that soy flavor i'm gonna go ahead and use that soy sauce on a lot more upcoming cooks last place was the powder generic tenderizer great value walmart whatever and i don't know if this is brand specific as far as the results go uh, but bromelain should be bromelain and it just had no effect and i put quite a bit on there you saw i used quite a bit more than than the uh the the recommended dose or recommended amount and i i just i didn't get anything like it if i didn't know any better i would have just thought it was just a regular strip steak straight from the grocery store with nothing on it and you know i've had a lot of steaks from there a lot of strip steaks from that store and that is very similar to the consistency or the you know, the bite that you get out of a normal steak. There was really no effect in tenderness. Uh, it was great, you know, steak, steak, right? I mean, it's delicious, but it just, as far as tenderness, it was definitely by far in, in the last place with no noticeable 
improvement and tenderness. There was also no flavor at all, uh, but that's a good thing. I, I don't want you know flavor with things that I'm not looking for uh, flavor out of. So that, that's a good thing, but uh, it's just, to, it was a waste of money to be honest with you. And again, that might be brand specific. There, there may be some other brands out there that you're gonna have better results with. And again, this is not a laboratory testing environment by a long shot. This is a backyard, you know, roughing it. How's this gonna work out if I use it? Guys, I really appreciate you sticking around for the whole video. If you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, please go check those out. Hopefully you get something out of those as well. We're using all kinds of different products. If you have any suggestions for, for products to use in the future, drop those in the comments. Please, if you like the video, smash that like button, share the video with your family, your friends, your Facebook page, your Twitter page, all those pages. Help me bring the wonderful love of barbecue to all those backyarders out there. I hope you guys have an awesome week. I'll see you on the next video.